Aver Media is a brand that you may be familiar with if you've been in the streaming content world for a while, but it's also possible that you've never heard of Aver Media because they seem to fly a little bit under the radar. They make webcams, capture cards, some software solutions, and audio gear, including the boom arm that we're gonna take a look at in this video. I'll also be reviewing their Streamer 350 condenser mic, but in this video, we're gonna focus on the BA311 live streamer arm. Before we dive in, I wanna mention that Aver Media sent me the BA311 boom arm for the purpose of reviewing it. I was not paid to make this video and Aver Media has no input on my review. I do have an Amazon affiliate link in the description for you if you're interested in picking up the live streamer boom arm and you'd like to support this channel. I consider desk mounted microphone boom arms in three different categories that I've made up. Traditional suspension arms that have a higher profile and some of which, use springs to apply tension and tend to be less expensive, and some of which utilize tension joints only, which have a solid arm structure. And then the third category would be low profile arms that use tension joints. The Avermedia BA311 is like a combination of two of those categories. It's a suspension arm that can be used upright, just like this, and it does not use springs. It's a solid arm style with tension joints that control how firm or loose the joints are for different weighted mics. However, it can also be put into a low profile position as well, thanks to the different articulation points that it offers. It even has one extra trick up its sleeve that not a ton of boom arms on the market have. Let's start by covering the basics and then we'll talk pros and cons in comparison to some other options. The BA311 live streamer arm is made of aluminum arm segments and the joints are a mixture of plastic and aluminum parts. The desk clamp has padding on the top part and it fits desktops with a thickness of up to 2.1 inches. The arm segments are slightly different lengths here with the lower section being 16 inches in the center and the top being 14 inches in the center. The base rotation is 360 degrees and the first pivot point here will move backward and forward a total of 135 degrees. So it can fold down to a horizontal position when forward facing and then it can rotate back to a little bit past 90 degrees in the other direction. There you go, that's where it stops. Now, now the middle joint in the default configuration, of course, moves the top arm up and down, but you can also actually twist this joint so that it becomes a left and right movement when it's in the horizontal position. I do wanna point out though, that there is a lot of resistance to twisting it. So basically what you do is this part right here, this is the part that will twist. You can actually tell which, which parts twist because there's a little like raised bump here and then at the other point where it will twist. You might think you're breaking it, but you're not. It just requires a lot of force to actually twist this so that this joint becomes a left and right movement when this is horizontal. Now the joint on the microphone attachment end rotates on two axes. Of course, it pivots forwards and backwards, but you can also, again, twist this entire thing like that, so that when it's in the horizontal position or low profile position, you can get your mic positioned just the way you need. And the way that you attach the microphone actually has a nice little like screw head on the top so that it makes it very easy to just hold onto the microphone and unscrew from the top, just like that. The weight capacity is 1.8 kilograms or 3.9 pounds. So you shouldn't have any issues holding heavier microphones, but you can adjust the tension of each of the joints with a simple hex key, which it was necessary for me when I put one of my heavier microphones, the Electrovoice RE20 on here, I did have to adjust the tension, but it was simple and it held up just fine once I adjusted that tension. The microphone mount here is a standard 5 8 inch mount, but there is a little secret hidden here. If you unscrew the little screw in the center of the threaded mount, the 5 8 inch mount comes off and reveals a quarter 20 mount. So you can use this with cameras and other devices that have a quarter inch mount. Now, lastly, we have cable management on the arms here. It's just a little groove, which you cover with these little plastic covers that are included. So you slide your cable in here and then there are multiple of these included in the box that you have to snap into place over the cable. There is no internal routing of cables with this arm. It's just the grooves on both arm segments. All right, now let's do a quick test of the BA311 and one of my favorite boom arms, the Rode PSA1 Plus to see how well it can shrug off bumps to the desk and to the boom arm and what it sounds like in the mic. For this, we're gonna use the Rode PodMic USB. I'm recording over USB straight into Audacity. So here we go, we'll bump the desk. And then we'll just bump the boom arm.
bump the microphone itself. All right, and now we've got it moved over to the Rode PSA One Plus. So here we go. We'll start tapping the boom arm. Tapping the desk. Now this is the BA311 positioned in a traditional suspension style boom arm, bringing the microphone in kind of high up in the frame. This, depending on the style of content that you make or whether you're streaming or gaming or something like that, may or may not be the ideal position. For example, I am looking at my computer monitors right now. The sort of top part of this mount is actually blocking a little bit of my left monitor. The suspension mounting it from high up in the frame may not be ideal for every use case, but if it doesn't cause a problem for you, then the BA311 can certainly do that. However, while we're here, I wanna point out something specific about the SM7B, and that is specifically how it mounts to the BA311. Because of the unique way that the XLR cable connects up here, with the SM7B, the mount for it will actually cause an issue for rotating the microphone. If you need to rotate it more than just a little bit, your XLR cable is going to sort of run into the part of the mount. Now you can get around that by adding a little extension tube, as I'll, I'll mention that again a little bit later, but in terms of traditional mounting it from the upward position, no major concerns here. Now we have the boom arm in the low profile configuration. I moved it to the other side of my desk because I have a little bit more room over there. So now it's coming in from the other side of the desk and from a much lower position. And as you can tell, you can see a lot less of the boom arm. You can actually, at the moment, I don't think you can see any of the boom arm in the frame. You can of course see the microphone in the frame, but overall there's a lot less covering up any part of the frame. And I could even have a little bit less of the microphone in the frame just by punching in, zooming in on my shot a little bit. So if you make the type of content where your goal is to have as little of a microphone or a boom arm in the frame as possible, then using it in the low profile configuration can help with that. All right, now let's talk about some pros and cons that I've observed. Starting with some pros here, overall the build quality is good. The aluminum construction of the arms and some of the uh, some of the joints are aluminum, but overall I would say build quality is very nice. It is what I would expect for the price point. And the option to use this as a regular or low profile boom arm is nice. It's nice to have the ability to do both with one boom arm and have all of the different pivoting points that this has so you can get just the right positioning for your microphone. It does require a fair amount of force to make some of these adjustments, which I'll get back to in just a second. But overall, I would say the versatility you get is, is very nice. Also, as I mentioned earlier, including the quarter inch mount is a nice touch. It's nice to have that and not have to search for an adapter. I also like that it is the solid arm style. There's no springs here, so there's no resonance, which means bumping it is just kind of a dull thud in your microphone. It doesn't ring in the microphone like the boom arms that use springs do. For some reason, those types of arms just tend to transmit a lot more sound into the microphone when you accidentally bump into them or bump into your desk. There are a couple of cons here, so let's talk about those. First up, the biggest con to me here is cable management. It's just not great execution. The covers are very fiddly and hard to put on, and the groove is just not big enough for, for most XLR cables. If you have a very thin XLR cable, it'll fit in there, but for average or thicker XLR cables, it's just not, doesn't seem to be made for XLR cables. Now, also some of the adjustments are quite difficult in general, and you have to be very deliberate with your manipulation of anything other than rotating the base. Rotating the base is very easy. You can easily do this with just the touch of a finger. It doesn't like spin super freely, but you can very easily swing your microphone away from you and bring it back with just you know a light touch, which is great. But some of the other adjustments, especially the twisting movements of the microphone end and then especially this joint here if you want to twist it when it's down in the horizontal configuration it's it's i'm going to call it very difficult of course if you are a stronger individual than i am which is pretty difficult then maybe you'll find it a little bit easier but I just think it should be a tad easier to make those adjustments. I know obviously they don't wanna make them super loose or anything, but I'm calling it a downside that it is a little bit tough to make some of those adjustments. 
Now, this is a kind of a minor nitpicky thing, I think, but the mic attachment here might be a tad short for some microphones. If you have an SM7B with that kind of unique mounting point, and then you start to turn the microphone side to side, that mounting point is gonna bump into the rest of the mount up here. However, there is a simple and affordable solution for that. You can just buy some of those very affordable little aluminum microphone stand, uh, those little tubes, and you can just screw one onto the end here, and then you'll have a longer mounting point for your microphone. So easy to address, but but you could run into an issue here if you don't have an extension and you have one of the types of microphones that, uh, that mounts kind of close up to where the mount is. Now also in low profile configuration, the base height of the first joint, which is this one right here, it's actually higher than some dedicated low profile arm. So if you intend to use this in the low profile configuration, just be aware that this height here is 6.25 inches compared to say the Elgato Wave low profile arm, which is only four inches here. Depending on where you wanna mount it, that could be a little bit of an issue for you. If you're mounting it on the side of your desk or something, that should be a non-issue. But if you wanted to mount this on the back of your desk and run this under one of your computer monitors, this might be a little too tall unless your monitors are like really high up off your desk. To me, that's not a deal breaker. It's just something to be aware of if you intend to use it in low profile configuration. All right, lastly, let's talk about what you're getting for the price. The price from both the Avermedia online store and on Amazon in the United States, at least, is $159.99, so $160. The price of the Rode PSA One Plus, which is one of my favorites, and I have three of them, is $129. The BA311 does have a couple of advantages if you value the ability to transform the arm into low profile because you can't do that with the PSA One Plus. You can certainly extend it out and angle it so it's a little more like a low profile, but it's just not made to do that low profile configuration. It's also better at shrugging off bumps in my comparison. It just kind of you know, transmits a dull thud to the microphone, whereas the PSA One Plus is not immune from transferring some of that ringing resonance when you bump into it. However, if you exclusively use XLR microphones, the cable management system of the PSA One Plus is just better. It's a lot easier to deal with. So overall, I would say the BA311 could definitely be worth it and is not a bad value for the price, especially if you use USB microphones so you won't be quite as frustrated with the cable management. But if you need good cable management for XLR microphones, the frustration with that, that could be a deal breaker. Well, that'll do it for my review of the BA311 from Avermedia. If you wanna see my review of the Livestreamer AM350 condenser microphone, be sure to subscribe so you can be notified when it comes out. After that's published, I'll put a link to it right here so you can jump right to it. Thanks everybody, see you next time.